okay, well, the neurofoam, my own experiences with it have been confirmed recently by, uh, by tests by uh, neurosurgeons and psychiatrists. But um, I had the experience of, of helping to develop a device called the Neural Efficiency Analyzer. And this is a device that measures the intelligence quotient of a human being without any kind of verbal or written test. It's all electronic. And it turns out that, that the higher the IQ, the more the, the left or right hemispheres of the brain are in perfect alignment. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the neural efficiency analyzer uh, was developed in the 1970s, and 25 PhDs were given in different universities in the development. It's a very well-known device. It's, uh, it's uh, NEA is, is the initials for it, but Neural Efficiency Analyzer. And what this device does is, is it uh, flashes a light in the eyes with a strobe line. And then, then you have two electrodes on the back of the, of the head over the visual cortex of the brain. And, and it records, it's called an evoked response. When you flash a light in the eyes, that, that the neural impulse goes and you get a response in, in the visual cortex of the brain. And, but in most people, in, in fact in everyone, virtually everyone, you have a time delay between the left and right hemispheres. And the greater the time difference, the lower the IQ, the lower efficiency of the nervous system. And so one of the things that, that we discovered very early on using the neural efficiency analyzer is that when you use the neurofoam for um, about half an hour, 15 minutes to half an hour, that it, it causes the left and right brain to go into perfect synchronization which, according to the definition of the analyzer, means your your IQ would be infinite. Okay. Cool. Yeah, because if, if you have perfect phase coherence. And um, how do you explain a child prodigy, someone who comes in uh, eight years old and knows how to design electronic circuits? And so... Um, but one of the things is that I feel that, that I, I am given information. I don't know from what source, but it's a good source because it's, I've been given good information. Um, many uh, scientists and inventors in history who have been very prolific, like Leonardo da Vinci, and, uh, have, have said similar things, that, that they feel like they're receiving their information. Um, I'm like a crystal receiver, and I get information. All I do is ask and I get information, which is pretty profound. But So when I was 13 and, and developed the Neurofoam, I used it uh, for four years until my first IQ test. And my first IQ test showed that I had an IQ of over 200. They, they couldn't register it because the test, 200 was a maximum on the scale. And so the reason I'm saying this is not because of a, a ego, uh, but because uh, I believe the neurophone is responsible, and I believe that it can do this for anyone. And so now we move forward 43 years, well, over 40, uh, let's see, 47 years. I invented the neurophone 40 years, 47 years ago. And we move forward in time, and we have neurologists, psychologists testing neurophone with a 28-channel EEG, and we have discovered that the neurophone indeed does align the left and right hemispheres of the brain. It causes um, us to focus on um, uh, producing, our minds produce uh, delta, theta, and alpha rhythm. Delta is normally produced when we're asleep, and theta is, is produced in extremely deep relaxation. And uh, alpha rhythms are produced when we're in a state of reverie, like when we're dreaming, we produce alpha rhythms. Now, the only people known to produce these waves simultaneously are, uh, well, I'll give you one example. Graham Hill, who is one of the world's greatest racing drivers, Grand Prix racing drivers, um, was followed by a psychiatrist by the name of uh, Jensen. And uh, during uh, one of the races in Monaco, 
uh, Graham Hill won the race. And at the party celebrating the race, there was a, a woman. Uh, there were th you know, thousands of people at, at this party. But he walked up to a woman and he said, I saw you in the grandstands today. And she said, there were 100,000 people in the grandstands and you went by at 200 miles an hour. It's impossible that you could have seen me in all those 100,000 people. And he said, no, you were wearing, and he gave her a description of the clothes she was wearing. And so so Jensen said, are, are you kidding? And is this really true? Did you really, you're not, this isn't just yeah. some line yeah. you're using. And he said, no, I remember it very clearly. And so, so they did a test where they put Graham Hill in, in a racing simulator. And they took him uh, at different speeds. And when he reached, everyone has a speed at which they can travel in a car, for example. And above a certain speed, their, their mind shut down. In other words, they can only handle so much and then the mind shuts down. And those people will die. For example, uh, if, if some ordinary person were to try to drive a, a Formula racing car and they went to 180 miles an hour, their mind would shut down and they would crash the car because they, they would lose control. Graham Hill, what happened is that when he reached 180 miles an hour, his mind went into pure delta rhythms, delta brain rhythms. And, and at that moment, he sees everything in slow motion. In other words, the, the high speed and everything shuts down and it's all very slow motion. So while he's driving by the grandstand at 200 miles an hour, for him, he's just like walking past the grandstand in his mind. And so he could look and observe at people in the grandstand. And so he, he saw this woman and he liked the way she looked, so he paid attention to her. And so I personally have had this happen in my life. Um, I, when, when I reach a certain speed, I go into slow motion also. Now that's something that was developed in my life because I remember when I was very young, uh, someone uh, hit a baseball and the baseball came. And when the baseball was coming, I became paralyzed and the baseball hit me in the, in the head. Okay. Now, when that happened, of course, that's something that you realize that, that you have no control because because I was paralyzed. Well, that the baseball was coming so fast and it was a dangerous situation and, and I became paralyzed like most people. Well, that was when I was very young. Later on in my life, a similar thing happened again and this time it was in slow motion. And and, and, and slow motion, all I did is, is move my head slightly to the side and it went past me. And so this is conscious awareness. And so I believe my own experience with the neurophone is that it has raised my conscious awareness to the point where I have uh, survival skills, which, which are much greater than, than I had before. And one of those, those things was, was uh, uh, in flying airplanes. I, I had a, an, accident, an almost accident flying an airplane alone when I was 17 years old in which which everything went into slow motion, and I was able to compensate and control airplane. And so that's why uh, that, that was a, another incident. But these things, it is my belief that, that it's all because of my use of the neurophone. Because in, uh, at the age of 17 also, I lectured at the, uh, at, the, at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, New York, one of the most famous medical clinics in the world. Dr. Steve Farian, who brought uh, a, a mystic from the Himalayas, Dr. Steve Farian, uh, brought the mystic, Dr. Swami Rama, into the clinic and examined him. Swami Rama. Yes. Uh -huh. and, but Swami Rama uh, had a certain brain, brain wave pattern and could control various aspects of his body consciously. And so, so when I lectured at the Mayo Clinic, being a child prodigy, uh, there were 500 doctors there, and, and I demonstrated some mental abilities and things that I gave in my lectures, which I haven't done in any of them. Uh, anyways, uh, the ability to control other people's energies um, with, my, with my mind. Um, so Steve Farian said, 
uh, can I put you on the EEG and, and take a look at your uh, patterns just to see what it looks like? And so uh, one of the things that, that he pointed out was that in, with my eyes wide open, I was producing delta, theta, and alpha rhythms. And that even when I was given a mathematical uh, problem uh, to solve, most people, when, when you go in a mathematic uh, equation or any kind of problem solving, alpha rhythm disappears if they're in alpha or in lower brain state. And they go into the higher frequency brain waves and aren't uh, producing any of those uh, more uh, attractive uh, wavelengths. And so, uh, so uh, no matter what I did, no matter what kind of mathematics or, or what was happening with my eyes wide open, I was producing those same, he said my brain waves were virtually identical to Swami Rama's. So it's the neurophone. It has nothing to do with me personally, I don't think. Uh, at least, well, anyway. Well, part of it is that I was able to receive the neurophone in the first place. But I believe the neurophone has been responsible for the development of my brain to, to uh, higher intelligence levels and, and creativity levels. Uh, because that, that's why uh, the, whatever higher powers they gave it to me when I was 13 years old, they gave it to me early so that, so that throughout my life I would use it and it would develop my, my higher mind function. I believe this is possible for for anyone. Okay. Uh, I don't use it every day. I I would like to use it every day. I try to use it every day, and I usually use the neural phone when I feel stressed mm -hmm. or if I'm tired. Uh, sometimes. Uh, I'll, I'll feel tired. Uh, well, for example, if, if I stay up late, um, sometimes uh, traveling, for example, uh, jet lag, things like that, on an airplane, I put the neurophone on, and, and within minutes, it puts me into a, this wonderful state. Uh, we, were, we were at a, uh, there's an art festival in the desert of Nevada called Burning Man. Uh, and Burning Man uh, is a very intensive kind of thing. Uh, 30,000 people show up in the middle of, of the desert in a place that is inhospitable. There's no water. There's nothing. No vegetation. And and they build a community. And, and they all live there for a week, basically. And and, and it's, a, it's a giant party. And it's, it's an art festival party in which everyone participates. Uh, but it's very stressful, and, and they have uh, loud music playing, extremely loud music playing all over the place all night long, every night, and, and, and people are dancing and, 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 uh, and having festivities all night long, every night, for a week, and people get pretty, uh, pretty uh, a technical term would be burned out, <laughs> but exhausted and burned out, and so... Um, Someone came came to to see me toward the end of the festival, and they they obviously weren't feeling very good, and and, uh, and we're not quite there. And so I said, "Here, I'd like to try something." And they said, "What's that?" And I said, "Just close your eyes." And I said, "Take take stock of how you feel. I'll put these little discs on your head. You'll hear a sound, and and then I just want you to to listen to it for a few minutes." So. So I put the electrodes on this woman's head, and in in a few minutes, suddenly she started shouting, "Wow, wow, wow! I can't believe it!" And I said, "Well, what's happening?" She what said, you? "She said I feel wonderful." She said, "All oh, my tiredness is gone." She said, "I'm here. I feel really good." She said, "I feel like I had a night's sleep." So that's another experience with the neurophone.